Soon. We are back again with Game Plan on 99.7 Joe FM. Welcome to the show. Very good afternoon from wherever you're tuning in. It's lovely to have your company. My name is Fentio Tahu Fentio, your most authoritative uh, sports talk show on radio. Here in the capital and beyond, we are on from now till 3 p.m. dissecting all of the biggest issues from the world of sports here on the show. And this week, there's been quite a lot. The Black Stars are in town, of course, uh, to play the last round of qualifiers for the Africa Cup of Nations. They have booked a place to Cote d'Ivoire next year, a 10th consecutive AFCON tournament for the Black Stars of Ghana. Well done to everybody. And they did that with a 2-1 win against the Central African Republic in Kumasi on Thursday night. That was yesterday. You watched the game or you listened to commentary or you read all of the commentary around the match. We're looking at what cues, what clues we can pick from that as well. That was Chris Hutton's fourth match in charge of the Black Stars. And that was his second victory. So two wins, two draws from the Irish Ghanaian trainer. But have you been impressed with what you saw? We qualified, of course. There was a point where we didn't look like we were qualifying. So from stunned, surprised, elated, nervous. Yeah, we were definitely taken to the emotions yesterday. But in the end, we got a 2-1 win. Ketsi goals from Kudus Mohammed and Enes Nyama. Both of them with a right to dream. What have you made of Chris Houston's tenure so far, especially yesterday's game? What clues or cues have you picked up about what this team could potentially do? We have about five matches to play until the Africa Cup of Nations, two games in October. I think maybe two more in November. And then, uh, of course, the one that is on Tuesday. So basically, that's that. And maybe when we start preparing for the AFCON, we could get another game in there. Chris Eaton said he needs time. He needs a lot of time to build a team that we want to see. But what is lacking? Why are people not particularly impressed with the team's performance? What is the main issue in this team? Why are they not playing swagalicious football? They are basically grinding out results against very, very well, some would say mediocre teams and every time they've come up against top teams, they get walloped like they did against Algeria just before the AFCON or they did against Morocco at the AFCON teams that are wet, they are sold, Ghana loses the ones that don't even seem to be doing too well that even those matches, they struggle so you lose against Uruguay, Portugal, Morocco Algeria, any team that seems strong and then you struggle for victories against CAR, Madagascar. It just doesn't look good. So what's the problem? All right, so we'll get into that. The guys are here. Also, uh, Georgia Free is disqualified from contesting the GFA elections. It's a big deal. He's only one of two candidates who had filed to contest the elections, including the incumbent president, uh, Ket E.S. Okreku. Okay, but George is out now. He's got three days to appeal. He's got until Monday. Our understanding is that he's fighting and putting documents together to appeal. But we'll take you through the electoral committee's decision and what they cited for the reasons why George has been disqualified. Try to understand whether they were procedural errors or they did everything by the book. We'll have a, uh, a an astute <laughs> GFA. <laughs> Statues man join us to try to make us understand what really are the issues uh, regarding this matter. Why has Georgia Free? Because when you read the verdict, it looks like something very simplistic that he missed. But is it really that simple? All right, so basically, those are the two issues we'll be looking at today. Um, so we have a lot of time. Plus, some phone calls at the end, I promise you. Uh, we'll pick some phone calls. I'm sure you have a lot to share. Uh, about the Black Stars and even this Georgia Free Year matter. But before then, you can still contribute to the conversation uh, using the WhatsApp line 055-1111-997. 055-1111-997. You can also leave us a comment on under the uh, the Twitter spaces. It's uh, where the show is streaming right now. Just add your comment with the hashtag GamePlan. 
You could also just tweet at me or tweet at us. Just use the hashtag game plan and we'll see your message on Twitter. And then later, we'll open the phone lines. The number is 0302. Write it down. 0302-216-541. 0302-216-541. And you can contribute to the conversation. Your thoughts on the Blast House performance and Georgia Frias disqualification. That's what we're looking at today on the show. All right, game plan is live on Hit 103.9 FM as well as Joy 99.7 FM and it's sponsored proudly by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity. Petrosol, always a delightful experience. And bet away, bet your way. Uh, Daniel Cranting is here as well. Daniel, welcome to the show. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Abila Abdullah is also here. <laughs> Yeah. What's that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> this guy from Dudie. <laughs> <laughs> and switch off a Philip at Shrim. It's not on the show. Big congratulations to him. Yeah, man. Daniel, he deserves something. This one is, we are taking the boys <laughs> away. That's right. <laughs> we are taking the boys <laughs> away. That's right. Sicho <laughs> Fair, Philip Astrim, a very important member of his show, uh, got hitched yesterday to his uh, childhood sweetheart. His long time girlfriend. That's right. Yes, that should be the story. <laughs> Sicho Fett, man, it's long time girlfriend. Yeah, That's Charlie. right. Being a one club man will be easy. Charlie, okay, at you. <laughs> Tell me a clue. Too. The man who is not <laughs> kidding you. The man who is not married. We've brought the bachelor to come and replace the married man. Happy retirement to Sicho. What's that mean? Uh, uh, oh, so he's of the singles market. So, so he's retired. Ah, so yes, but what right. work was he doing before the retirement? That's what I'm oh. saying. You see, when you are a single man, he's you are working. You are always working. You are always working. I thought that your is always working. He's always working. You brought to the swing. We're talking about somebody. I'm talking to you. We did all that. You know, he has come to drag his belly. And anyway, guys, welcome to the show. Sorry, thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, let's get started, okay? Yesterday, um, uh, we have two very important issues to talk about. The first one, of course, and let me just lay the grounds for it. Yesterday, Ghana played against the Central African Republic. Uh, they won by two goals to Mayo. And one. it wasn't, uh, sorry, two goes to one, I beg your pardon. And it wasn't an easy victory, uh, <laughs> to be fair, because, you know, they put us through the emotions, you know, when they conceded first. But then the team showed some character. That is an aspect of a team we haven't seen in such a long time. Yeah. And they came from a goal down under intense pressure at the Babaya Stadium with uh, lots of fans sharpening their teeth for what was to come. They <laughs> stepped up and they delivered overturning uh, that and winning by two goals to one. Kudus Mohammed scored a free kick. Then an Insunyama came off the bench in the stadium located in the neighborhood where he was born and raised. And then scored on his debut. An easy tap in from two yards. Probably the easiest goal he would ever score for the Black Stars. But it didn't stop the talk and the conversation and the commentary after the game. Most people largely were very unimpressed. Especially about the first half performance. And then about the performance of yet again maybe Inaki Williams. Who has gone through nine matches now for the Black Stars. He's not scored a goal just yet. Barraman has also come under some pressure. Uh, the midfielders yesterday, Lasha Uzi and Salis, the performance, um, people didn't think it was great. <coughs> Overall, just to say this, that the performance left a lot more people unimpressed than they had even from the previous three matches under Chris Huting. And you have the feeling the criticism of the Irish Ghanaian trainer would not stop anytime soon. So, Yesterday, he was asked specifically about two things. One, he was asked about the performance of a team. And then he says he agrees that the performance wasn't great. And that he thought that in the end, Ghana could have had a more comfortable win. 
but sometimes these things happen. This is what he said. It's, it's always about the ending. The ending is it that we won the game. I think in the end we could have won it more comfortably with more goals. So we continue to work. In international football you don't have the players for very long and the squad can change from one game to the next. So, but you do the best you can in the period of time that you have. Yes, and that's it. So basically saying that he never has enough time to work with the team. So what he can do is what he's done. And, and, and so it is that. He was asked about Inaki Williams. Many people have said that he's wrongly profiled and he's not a number nine. He's not a center forward. We should stop playing him there. Chris Hutton disagrees. He says he is. He has seen that he's played in other positions, but he says primarily the guy is a center forward. He's a number nine. In other words, he would keep playing him there until he comes together for him. This is a player that plays in a top league, um, can play uh, in the wide area, but predominantly uh, Inyaki is a, is a number nine. He's a center forward. This is where he's played the large majority of his career. He's found it difficult to get the goals here, and sometimes, sometimes it might take a very lucky goal for him to score that gets him off the mark and things change but with with number nines it's not always about scoring goals it's about what they're prepared to give the team and yes he's still waiting for that goal and i'm quite sure at some stage it will come for him all right that's uh that's chris Uting. so then you have all the facts on the grounds now guys um gary I i'll let you have a first bite at this um we have qualified of course um congratulations so, to all of us for exactly that. the qualification in itself is a big deal central african republic have never qualified <laughs> for the afcon yeah. we've done it 10 times in a row now the last time we didn't qualify was 2004 uh in tunisia and uh, we also kept that Babaya stadium on beating record intact the last time we lost the game you have to go back to 2000 when we co-hosted the afcon and lost to south africa uh, south africa uh <laughs> non uh, let's go on. I don't think Daniel was bonded but um uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Daniel yeah, did yeah. you watch AFCON 2000 no there's no need to lie <laughs> he's, 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 <laughs> but don't say it. Don't I'll see. see. Yeah. I mean, so, 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 yeah. Congrats uh, to the team. First yeah, but Gary, I don't know your takeaways from this game. Well, the takeaway is 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 that there's more room for improvement, and I'm happy that Chris Hutting, you know, accepted that there's there's a ways to go. Um, the interesting thing about what he said regarding the not having enough time. I mean, it's a feature of international football, and every every coach deals with that problem most of the time. I say most of the time because we played against an opposition that typically does not have that problem, which is what has accounted for how well they have played these qualifiers. Yeah. They typically will get their team together about two weeks before. And some people would ask, how do they do that? Considering that, you know, most clubs in the world, yeah. or if you have a team with mostly European based players, you can't get that happening. Is that like you said in your commentary for anybody who who listened um some of the players are not what you call ext extremely active in the in their leagues yeah. you know so they have the and i've barely played together in the blasters because yeah. yesterday even during my research just to help the point you're making jordan Ayu has 91 appearances for the national team mm -hmm. uh babaraman has 52 mm -hmm. between the two of them is 142 uh, or 43 I, th I think you mentioned that yeah in the commentary. 43 caps two players the rest of the entire squad put together have less than 100 yeah so it just feeds to what you're saying there's no regular playing time for any of those players in the national team yes whereas a team like central african republic have their opposite you know and then actually camping the players is also a thing because you can't get the ghanaian players to be camping for two weeks <laughs> I mean, if you get them camping like that, they'll be, they're going to be playing some delectable football. But that is why you are Ghana. That is why you are Chris Hutting. You come, get the job with the guarantee that you can do that sort of magic. Right. That right. is why you are Chris Hutting. Mm. So you can agree with him in certain respects. But then again, the caliber of players you are working with, where they play, the profiles of the leagues they play in, the expectation that they 
walk into the team and because of how talented they are, yeah. the kind of you know upbringing, yeah. football upbringing they have, they should be able to gel in about a few training sessions. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that Chris Hilton has been with the team for long enough yes. is a key point. That a he didn't just come in. Exactly. He had like <coughs> nine months to one year to watch the team and observe the team. Yeah. And that was one of the key reasons. Let's not be dishonest. <laughs> one month to one year, say. March last year. That's yeah. more than, well, that's a month and what? Six, six months. months. Uh, that, that's a year and about four months or six months. It's, it's a lot yeah. of time. It's it's one key reason why those backing his appointment said he was okay for the job. Because he had sort of been like a shadow, a shadow Black Stars coach, quietly observing. Yeah. We had been told that he had been key in making some of the inputs, you know, in, in that time as well. So immediately he makes that point that you played in the queue. You agree to a certain extent, but largely you have key pointers and facts to counter these arguments and really some would say and Danny was telling me we were here yesterday and he was telling me that I mean when you when you get somebody like Chris Hutin you know his track record you know what it yeah, says on the thing what it says on the on the can is not Chris Hutin Chris Hutin rice and stew delicious and affordable and <laughs> and, and delectable football no that, Chris Hutin does not come with that the Chris Hutin can of food comes with win we will win by any means necessary that that is what his style of football is and then he was asking boring still boring still but he was going to get win. you there but we will get you the win so we we have to decide that this is what we have and psych ourselves that this man is not going to give us the sexy football that a lot of us crave however if he goes to the afcon the first job he would have is to write off the poor history bit of history that we made in the last AFCON, which is that he should get past the group stage. That will be one of his key jobs. Well, it, it, it does mean that also we need to contact some spiritualists because we have been cursed now. Exactly. I was coming to, <laughs> I was coming to that very important point. You see, as you at, want to go at, and pay dollars? You know, as at 5 o'clock yesterday, 5 p.m. yesterday when the game ended, or 5.45 yeah. when the game ended, our problems were that we have players, we are not choosing them. Um... We, we have, have players, players who are not performing. We have players who we are choosing, but they are not performing. Mm -hmm. The GFA should stop, you know, doing interfering. some interfering <laughs> and so on. <laughs> Having a spiritual case was not one of them. <laughs> then by the time the the the, the, the whole Kabudo finished, to borrow a Patrick Akoto's word, the Central African Republic coach says that our next Afcon will be as bad as will be just like the last, just like the the, the last one. Oh, chairman. And his reason is he's, we cheated him. He that the second goal was an offside. Was an offside. But a lot of people played the video back. On, it was an offside. You see, it was an offside. You look at, in fact, there's one angle. I would look for it and try for us to post it. Twitter. Where somebody, not the official camera, somebody mm. used his phone to yeah. take the sequence, the sequence yeah. to the goal. And you can clearly see that it was an offside. Some have said that Antoine saint Menyo fouled the Central African. When he robbed him of possession. When he robbed him of possession or when he dispossessed him. Rob, robbing him sounds like a foul. It's a ah, foul. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when he uh, took the ball off him and then, you know, unselfishly. And, and Did that mean the man was, robbed? That was great. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I thought <coughs> that was really great from Semenyo as well. So these are some of my takeaways and also about the, the fact that what should we do with Antoine Semenyo? Because the last time we started him, he didn't play well. But when he has come off the bench, he has been good. True. So we have to make a decision. Yeah, some okay, of interesting. Um, the, and the day you did not play, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica <laughs> Comey was on the uh, BBC this morning and she, he was, she was asked that about the fact that, you know, is this the person of the guard and stuff like that? Because we, one of our most experienced players was on the bench. We didn't either. use him. And we will talk, you see, yeah. we will uh, talk about no, why Andrea you continues to be in the team yeah. when we have a time. And, and um, it, would, it would give people an idea of what really goes on behind <coughs> the scenes when it comes to the black stars chris Uting has made a certain point consistently i don't know if you guys noticed he spoke about in the interview with achu in particular he mentioned balance in the post in the pre-match press conference he mentioned balance he mentioned balance and people are assuming that it is a balance of talent or it's a balance of Structural that's not what balance. structural balance like looking for a balance between defense that's not what Chris Hitting is talking about he wants to regulate the temperature in the dressing Th room thank you yes that's what he's looking at 
He's, and Daniel, in particular, has made this point a lot of the time. He's looking for players with a certain attitude. Yeah. That is transmissible. Yeah. That is infectious. Yeah. You know, because it, for anybody that is not in the dressing room, you don't know exactly what goes on. There are certain players that command a certain level of respect and authority. Yes. Who inspires a certain leadership. They don't even need to be playing. They just need to be present. But why do they, and this is the point I've wanted to make, why do they get this sort of reaction from the other players? What people don't know is that behind the scenes, Andre Ayu, Jordan Ayu, those two gentlemen, they will, everybody will tell you, they are among the first to step out for lunch or breakfast or they are always punctual. Uh, even training. When was the last time anybody saw Jordan Ayu not come to camp early? Who Except this time? one. Except this one. Be and th there were you know, reasons at Crystal Palace for this. Yeah, he had to stay back for the whole yes. player of the man the thing. The player of the man thing and the, all that. You see, that is the reason why, for example, Jordan Ayu's thing that he's being chosen by. I was asking a Crystal Palace um, journalist who's yeah. covered the club for about 35 years. And he said, the thing about Jordan Ayu is that they know that he's not the best of footballers. They know. But the, you see, Crystal Palace is one of those very workman, uh, what's, it, what's it called? Working man clubs. Yeah. Mm. The working class clubs. They appreciate grit and graft. Yeah. Yeah. So if you apply yourself, they, they, they like it. So Jordan is, I mean, everybody knows he's not the most skillful. But look at yesterday's shift he put in. <laughs> Even for the game. Forget about yesterday alone. Uh, Daniel, okay, you were, Achu was on the show on Monday when Karim did his whole statistical yeah. analysis. Jordan is already the most foul player in the Premier League. We played four matches. Are you yeah. kidding me? When he was being given the Player, player of, the of the Month man. award, the journalist asked him, how do you cover so much ground and how do you run so much? And it's said, crazy. It's so, because so I sleep a lot. Ah, ah, you. I have, I'm, I'm privy to data from the GFA, sorry, from the Black Stars training. Yeah. And no player covers more ground than Jordan Are you in training. Are you Charlie? And he just came. This particular one what? already. But you want the coach to look at him and put him on the bench. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, um, you know, there, there are, we won, uh, and that's the most essential thing. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that we have done in the past was and Daniel is particularly guilty of this, is to see the signs and ignore them and say we've won. So forget about how we played. We have won. And then it's come back to bite us in the backside. That's a lie, but we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he likes to say, oh, we've won. That's the most important thing, which is true. But you also can't ignore the signs when yeah. they are there. It was the same in the build-up to the AFCON. We said, oh, we, we, we are winning, so forget about it. We struggled against Zimbabwe. We struggled against Ethiopia. Yeah. We... And we said, oh, forget about it. We are winning. That's what's essential. We went to the AFCON. We saw what happened. When we met teams that were superior, we struggled. Yeah. Same thing happened when we went to the World Cup. The qualifiers struggled against South Africa. They said we cheated them. And we said, <laughs> oh, we won. Said, oh, so we didn't particularly play yeah. well. <coughs> yeah, exactly. You know, what are the, from your point of view, what are the real issues with this team? What, first of all, why aren't we playing as well? Why are we struggling to get past supposedly average teams? And what do we need to work on primarily, uh, primarily to get this team firing? Because at the moment, it looks like we are stuck in first gear. I'll say it's because we have a broken technical culture in the national team. That's heavy. Yeah. That's heavy, man. And I would explain that. If you... So, go back to any of the Black Stars squads. Not even the team sheets from perhaps 2020, look at the profile of players that we call up. Then juxtapose that to the lineups on match days. Over time, for any period at all, it is hard, incredibly hard, to find any kind of consistent combinations on the team sheets. And on match days when the ball is kicked, it is difficult to find any kind of automatisms, any kind of choreographed, rehearsed or repeated patterns of play. There is nothing like that in the Black Stars. We haven't had that in what? God knows how long. If there is, and I throw a challenge to all of us, if there is anyone who remembers any distinct combinations, be it on the team sheet, 
any repeated names that you say that we in have defense to, go back to Abraham Grant that are significant to our play. <laughs> because it is not enough to say Bavaraman plays on the left. There is Alexander Dikud there. It has to have a certain impact on the team's play. I'm saying to you that those kind of combinations on paper and the automatisms and the rehearsed patterns of play are not existence. As to why five or four coaches have failed to be able to provide that, I have no idea. But it is unacceptable. And for me, that's the biggest worry. Yes. So it's not just one coach. I'm co I'll, I'll come to the other part of what we can explain. Because unless, they, unless we see the technical reports that they present as to what they attempt, and then the end product of that, before we can make any informed analysis. But from the little we see from outside, it is not good enough. Because whatever they are, they've tried in the last, what, three or four years, it has not worked. Beyond that, if you come to... so. And it's a problem that we have seen under Chris Hilton as well. If you take the four matches that we have played, it is difficult to find any consistent combinations in any of his call-ups and even the matches that we have played. It is difficult to... Yesterday, before the game, I was asking one of the guys at my office, so which are the combinations or the players that you think in the three matches that Chris Hilton has coached are the players that he trusts? <laughs> and he was like, oh... The informed players, I said, no. You are talking to me about performances from elsewhere at their club level. So even under Chris Hutton, we are seeing that pattern repeat itself. I think you definitely trust Jordan. I said combinations. I mean, no one player in isolation. Ah, okay. Combinations, yeah. Right. Beyond that, we also have to admit to ourselves two things. The first one is what Gary mentioned, that Chris Hutton is dogmatic wedded to one kind of football that has served him well in what nearly 20 years of coaching it is not Ghana that is coming to change him <laughs> so the ag the conversation about expectations of what chris has to do needs to be situated in that context this is who he is and mm. coaches coaching like boxing is defined by styles right if you hire pep Guardiola and you are the sort of country that likes hard compact low block football that is not expansive uh, not to say there is any country like that you're not going, going to get that kind of football from him he's a bit more futuristic more progressive and daring with his coaching so i'm just saying that the manager that we have now is not the kind that is going to give us afcon 2008 2006 kind of football or world cup 2006 kind of football you won't get that however why aren't we getting even 2010 so so that's where that's what I'm coming to. Is it possible to get this team to play significantly better than we are seeing? One goal project. Is it possible to get this team to play significantly better than we're seeing? Absolutely. Because Because I don't think it's an issue of talent. No. Because what we have seen is the football we've played in the <coughs> and not to single out Chris Hutton, but the now he's in charge, so he has to answer for it. The football that we have played is completely disfigured and difficult to identify. True. Now, coaches like Chris Hilton make their name because they have, some would say, paranoia towards conceding chances. Mm -hmm. So, they set up teams to play 5, 10, sometimes 15 meters deeper than your average team would. The whole idea is that the closer they play to their goal, the lesser space the opponents will have. So, they'll sit deep, absorb the pressure, contain the opponents. And there's one thing... That justifies that kind of football. It is because they are able to limit the chances the opponents create and also stop the opponents from building any kind of momentum. So if you go back to the great games of old or any game in history that is often referenced to support the low block and this whole compact defensive play, one of the things that you are going to find is that they make a lot of fouls in the second phase of the opponent's build-up. So the, and the whole idea is to stop you from creating any sort of momentum. Isn't that ironic, though? Because yesterday, we conceded because we were very high up the pitch. So, no, so I'll, I'll come to that, right? So, you see that... Um, I think everyone remembers the Inter Milan-Barcelona game at the San Siro. Yes. Yeah. The Jose Mourinho game. That is the whole concept. Limit the chances. Limit momentum. That, the <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> opponents <laughs> would create, right? I mean, sometimes when there are shots from distance on target, there's not a great deal that you can do to prevent those. But when you watch the Black Stars, weirdly, we don't play with a low block. No. We are not very compact. Be it in we, possession or out of... We concede for fun. Look, the goal that we considered for me was 
What was Jiku doing? Where was he? He went up there. <laughs> he <laughs> so, and the the forward ran just through that straight line. Yeah. He didn't have to make Eddie decoy run. He just he ran. just spotted the yeah. space there and then made the yeah. run. So structurally, there is a problem because if it is that we are saying we are not going to get an expansive attacking brand of football, defensively it has to look sound. It has to look sound. You don't need to play against Central African Republic and look like you are some amateurs. And excuse my language, that narrative of there are no minos in Ghana f- in football now, it does not work. No, it's not This true. is Central African Republic. No, they are true. part-time footballers. Senegal get them, they give them five. So the Senegal animals. was beating Brazil 4-3. Or was it 4-2? Yeah. In the last... Yeah. Yeah, At that friend. time, what were the Black Stars doing? I think it's just a, a, an excuse that we like to fall on so, when things don't so go So I'll right. come to the other... Sp- Part, but because the big teams are still beating the small exactly. teams. Exactly. So, yeah. I have established that, look, technically, there is something wrong with the Black Stars. The way they play does not make sense. Yeah. It is difficult to explain what Chris is trying to do. The players themselves, I love to call Kudu star, but when he does what he does in Kumasi. And Charlie, when, when we went to... Ka- so, Gary was sitting two seats from me. On in Qatar. What, Qatar. What I think was the best day of my life. Because, <laughs> Charlie... At least the first 60 minutes of, the, of that game Correct was... Game. The pride that we felt. And Against South Korea? Yeah. yeah. Ah. But look, we need to tell these guys they are wannabes. They are not stars yet. There is a standard that we are used to when it comes to the black stars. True. True. When Christian Atu the late made his debut in the national team, how long did it take him for him to become a bona fide starter in the team? Yeah, a while. Two, four years. A while. Repeatedly consistent performances. Still, because there was Andre... When Andre puts on the Black Star shirt, he turns into Maradona. Yeah. There was Sule Muntari. So, we need to tell these boys that, look, some of the things that we have... There is a reason why when Jordan plays at Crystal Palace, the nonsense that we saw in Kumasi, he doesn't attempt it. Swivel 360, by which time the space be in front or behind you has already been covered. A credit to uh, the king of 360, he has stopped. Kudus. <laughs> <laughs> look... We need to he tell our stopped. players... We He's releasing the ball faster. And Jan tweeted about it as well. Yes. Yes. We need so to tell our players that this is the Black Star. You are not stars yet. You earn the... Look, your association with the national team does not make you a star. Let's get that straight. You are there because we believe you have a certain skill set that can add value to the team. So you're saying that there's too much Dada B is Dada B is... Thank you. Dada B-ism. Too much Dada B-ism <laughs> in the Black Stars. No. Okay. There is, a, there is an established order in the team where right. players play over time repeatedly beyond that there's one thing i think chris also needs to fix okay i don't think the black stars train well mm. so i have on authority that the reason andre started that game versus madagascar mm-hmm. chris goes into the dressing room gives a wonderful team talk to the players when they first report to camp and says for training they have to play as if it's the world cup final every one of them mm-hmm it does not matter how long you've been in the national team. It does not matter your status from wherever you're coming from. I'll pick from. the team based on the training. Yes. Now, after those two training sessions, the conclusion of the te- technical team is that Andre has been monstrous. Conversely, conversely, the supposed stars of this era are playing as though they are short of slots in the team. Charlie. So, <sighs> the coach is thinking to himself... After saying, this is the standard that I want to set, do I go back on my own word and still play these guys because they came here on form? Or, so we may, I want, I do not want Andre to start. I but we, all of us have to come to the realization mm. that yeah. whatever our views on Andre are, he sets the standard in the national team. So he may not get to start, but I like it when he's in the team and he's showing these boys that, look, the national team means mm. more. What you are trying to tell us is that Andre is doing what Cristiano Ronaldo complained about before he left him. Exactly. Yeah. Look, every coach wants a player who is an extension of his authority. Yes. On the because you are not. For how long can you scream? You can, and it's the same point Daniel has made consistently about a player like Jordan Ayew that many people haven't understood and why every coach will keep selecting him. But I should let me go to Daniel and take his thoughts. Just, just give me five seconds. Eh? Uh, the GFE. Uh-huh. This attitude of constantly going public against Chris Hutton, it's rubbish. They should yeah, stop that it. Thing. So it, it. It creates a cheap citadel for the players because the interview that um, Mercado granted Love FM was in very bad taste. 
He, he, said, he said he should be getting more out of the squad. Which is a fair point. But he said it is not a question of talent. Yeah. As far as the players are concerned. So it redirects the focus. It absorbs the players of the blame. Le- How do you look at that performance and say we have enough talent? These boys. So in other so, words, wait. In other words, what you are saying is that Marcado is now saying, telling us that we now have Messi's in the team. In the team. Hey, Ronaldo. Look, have, look, <laughs> I'm just going to finish by saying that the, the guys are the GFA. Before you start pointing fingers at Chris Hutton, what you should be doing behind the scenes, by the way, check the caliber of teams who have beaten Ghana in the last three years yeah. or we have failed to beat. Comoros, Madagascar, Central African Republic, Ethiopia, Mali. Angola. We have changed coaches. We have changed management committees. It's about time someone tells these players that, look, they are wannabes. Wow. They no catch. Wow. Uh, Daniel, I, um, I want to take your thoughts on specific issues. First, the Inaki issue. Second, the midfield combination yesterday. It, it was... I mean, and to be fair, we were missing some key players. We have to, we have to admit that much. That, yeah. You know, Thomas Partey is a big deal. Um, but also, Barbara Mann, yesterday, again... Um, the the vitriol that was sent his way after the match that was embarrassing. it was and he was booed when he was being substituted you know i felt really bad you know and i had people tagging me on twitter because i think four or five days ago i went to tweet a video of barbara man <laughs> bawling at pauk and now people said i have yeah, the I reason didn't. yeah he said i'm the reason they called him <laughs> because i went to tweet that barbara man was doing well at pauk so they've called him and yesterday so so speak to me about that. Our lack of goal scoring, uh, and then what our best midfield choices are, and then the the whole idea of picking on individual players. Because even Jordan, are you was booed? I think in the game against Nigeria. Nigeria. You know, so the Kumasi crowd is developing a certain reputation. Uh, they are feeding off what the narrative that we are putting out there. So now, now and there, we can't really blame anybody. We've caused our own thing. So. <laughs> That's all happened. Let me start with the midfield combination thing. Um, friends, you need to understand that we were missing three of our best ball progressors yeah. that have been in the Black Stars over the past year, year and a half. Pate, Ashimero, um, Kofi Tre are all injured. Yes. So whoever is naming a squad is going to, to be extremely yeah, difficult for, for anybody naming a squad yeah. and trying to factor in that role, that position to fill. So it was going to be difficult. Um, I think I understand why Chris Hutton went for that midfield combination because they've played before. The friendly game uh, just before the World Cup against Switzerland. Which we won. Which we won. Salis and uh, Elisha played together. And they were quite decent. So if he was looking at a, a midfield duo who could do the job on the day and a midfield duo who also had a certain level of understanding between them, Personally, I would have gone for the same. So I, I understand that. And again, because both of them are not natural ball progressors, both of them are natural number sixes, but had to deputize in phases of the game to be number eights. I will not judge them too much on their ball progression. I thought I thought they were decent on the day. Where I think they fell short, and not just them, the entire team structure. So As soon as we lost possession of the ball, I don't think our counter-pressing was as strong. Mm. And counter-pressing is very important when you are playing a team that is looking to come at you through transition. Once you, you lose possession, that is where they are going to strike. So you need to put pressure on the ball to prevent them from finding those spaces. But we're not doing that. And once you don't do that, once you go back to retreating to try and fix your shape in transition... Any any decent team, any this anybody who has gone for training from Monday to Friday can hate you. Yeah. And that is what we saw. So I don't think it was a personal thing. I think it was a coaching mistake. But then again, when you look at the experience of the manager, you don't expect him to repeat that mistake again. Mm. Um I'll 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 have to talk for Chris Hutton mm-hmm. because I think this we have this very funny culture in this country. Me, my lifestyle, I've not won trophy before. So I really wonder how the po- and the population right now is dominated with my generation. Mm-hmm. So we've not seen a trophy before. We Yet don't know how it feels to win a you don't even know how it feels to win a trophy. Yeah. Yet when you are talking about a black stars coach, you are talking like you've won ten. <laughs> you've not won anything before. 
<laughs> so so no, seriously, what you deserve is what you're getting. It's not that. Mm. Football is work. It's not magic. Modern day football, even players, selection of players, is based on system. It's not a collection of good players. Mm-hmm. If Pep Guardiola is picking a team, there was this argument I was having with somebody. If and I said if Ingolo Kante had spent his entire career in Barcelona, we wouldn't have seen half of the player he is. If uh, Sergio Busquets has spent half of his career at Chelsea in England, <laughs> we wouldn't have seen the kind of player that he is. So the system also brings the best out of you, and these systems train the sort of players that they want to churn out. So where we are now, okay, our entire structure is broken. If we had a functioning, and I always repeat this thing, if we had a functioning grassroots system, if we had a very clear-cut idea of how we wanted our players to be, aka DNA, DNA, <laughs> and then we groom them, and then a head coach comes in, he will know that if he selects player A, B, C, D, they already understand what it means to play Ghana style. So when you bring them together, it's not now you are trying to teach them. But what we have is a collection of different players from different who have taken their football education from different parts of the world. Yeah. So if you are going to go down that route, then patience has to be the key. Ah, is it only Ghana that every coach has shown? No, I don't get it. When Kosi Apia can say his son, uh, Avram Grant can say his son, Siki has shown, Mino has shown, Chris Hutin too has shown. But the players, they, they, they are good. <laughs> I don't get it. So there's an elephant in that's the room very, there. No, seriously. Sometimes we need to be patient. Senegal is dead. Ah, and you, you are using Senegal as an example. Like uh, uh, this man, uh, Alou Sisi, when they hired him the following season, he was winning. Eh? He got kicked out of a quarter final. The people were saying they should sack him. But the FA had a plan. They looked at the signs. They said, relax. Calm down. It is a long-term process. Eventually, they will come good. Quarter final for Senegal. Oh, and that time, there was no round of 16 half con. It was 2017. No, it means first round after stages, group stages. Straight from group stages, they were kicked out. Against a Cameroon team, if you remember, who had a chunk of their players uh, uh, boycotting the tournament. Yeah. 2017. 2017. They were kicked out. They didn't sack him. He qualified for a World Cup. They went out. Group stages. They wanted him sacked again. They didn't sack him. 2019, AFCON final. They didn't sack him. 2021, they've won an AFCON. Now, they are World Cup round of 60. They are using Alucis as an example. That is patience. Mm. Relax. You have a very good head coach who has tons of experience. But you can't even use the last year with the Black Stars as a measuring, a, a rod. A measuring rod for him. <laughs> Do you know why? Modern day football the entire backroom staff must share the same football principles. A serious team doesn't go and select uh, select head coach from here. And select assistant, select from, assistant here. from here. <laughs> they come because Chris Hutton's style before and his I, understanding of football is very different from uh, Danny, Otuado. The points that you just said, when uh, Roberto Mancini was leaving the Italian job and everybody said it was because of money, he said maybe. But in which federation does the FA boss pick the assistant from here and then goes to choose yeah. the, the exact same yeah. thing he complained about yeah. Yeah. Italy find it strange yeah. but Someone Daniel you're, you're preaching patience that. now no, no. but we are in the exact same situation but the head coach came is, from a different place no the time. assistant came from a different no, place but you see uh, that is our system that's you see th- yes fine that is granted that is how we do our things it doesn't mean it's right but when you are lucky and you have somebody with the experience of Chris Hutton at the helm. You give him the patience. Yeah. You allow him to work. You allow him to make the mistakes. First four games are competitive games. Do you really want Chris Hutton to be doing trial and error in four competitive games? To be testing players who are on form in Sweden. And you should bring him and play because the person is on form. He can't, he can't have that luxury. He two doesn't of, have that luxury. Two of those first com- uh, four competitive games were against Madagascar. Does it matter? Yes, it does. It does not yes, matter. Yes, it does. Those are the two. And, 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 Trust and, and, me. And for me, that's what it's, I think it's, it's, it's another I, issue. I, I we, no, we see. You please. see, we need to... Listen. We need... My opinion is this, Daniel. I think that we need to demand more from ourselves, from the players, from Fit. the coaches. Nobody. You cannot tell me that... 
not beating Madagascar or not beating CAR is okay. It is not okay. We because see, there are we ah, beat let's Angola. Say, you see, we finished the you. we finished the Thank group you. stages. No, it's we finished the qualification and it is beating. important to demand more. Yes, but for me, that's that's what I'm saying. But, but so but I'm, I'm, but one thing so I'm saying that the opposition does accept. matter. No, I'm just, I'm, you see, I'm, no, you see, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I'm not saying nobody should criticize. I'm saying that when you look at some of these things, you look at these important factors, mm-hmm. then you know when to press the pan. Why are we panicking at after four games with Chris? It Uti? was after three. <laughs> Why, why are we panicking? Three. Uh, it was after three. Oh, now four. The four one hasn't come yet. <laughs> we, are, we have been better with Otoado. Uh, he needs to sit up. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, like, like, let's, let's calm down and quickly. That's we, a we, fair we, point. That, look, the, about the individual yes. players and the criticism and the then calling out. <laughs> See, this one I've sat up. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care how you brand me. When what you, you are about now, to say? Be careful. Uh, oh, I'm, you should be careful. Who am I afraid of? <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. when you allow politics, okay, and political games to shape your narrative, then you come and see that sense. There's very little sense in what is going on. Mm-hmm. Let me explain myself. First, they said Chris Hutton was uh, the government man, and the GFA didn't want him because yeah. they can't yes. influence him. His first call up, Andrea Yu is on the bench for the two games. They say, hey, Chris Hutton can't be influenced. Chris Hutton is a man of his, his, own, his own. He can't be okay. Then Andre starts the next game. And now it is Chris Hutton. was injured. So that it was a third game. Was there, a third game. Now Chris Hutton is afraid of Andrea Yu. After three months, Chris Hutton is afraid of Andrea Yu. First two games, Baba Raman didn't come. He was injured. Baba Aman comes back and then puts out a performance which is very similar to what we saw from Gideon Mensah and Patrick Pozo in the two previous games. But all of a sudden, we have forgotten. We forgot to know. Yeah. And right now, it is because Baba Aman's father is Keto Kreku. And Keto Kreku, today Keto Kreku can influence Chris Hutton. The same Chris Hutton we said it's the government be influenced man. because he dropped because Andre. he dropped Andre. He couldn't be influenced. And the GFA doesn't want him because you have to be consistent. Look, double standards here. Be consistent, and when you are consistent, you will find out that some decisions are strictly based on football. To be fair, Baba Raman's selection for this particular game was more than justified. If you look at the player he's competing with, Gideon Mensah, he's play, only played two games. He's been injured. Yeah. And Baba Rahman has been in Greece. He's playing in the Six Greek times. top league. Hold on. He's playing in the Greece top league. In the Greek top league. Guido Mensa is playing in the French second division. Yeah. Which of those two competitions would you say is probably more competitive? See, beyond but, even but the our team, national team, we uh, need to come to the realization that we are poor when it comes to left backs. That's why we keep shuttling between the two. Because if we had any decent left back, they would have that position on lock, just as Alidu has come to do at the right back. You see, that's a funny thing about that's a funny thing about having a prejudice and watching happen. a game. If you even watch Barbara Man's game tomorrow, yesterday, if you watch the game yesterday, the only flaw that you can use to uh, uh, the only he had an okay game. I, I'll be honest. Was the crosses? Yeah, he attempted four crosses. He had zero success rate. Alidu attempted two. He had zero. In fact, let me interest you. There was no successful cross that Ghana had in the game. True. Jordan accepted, uh, attempted five. He had zero. There was two from Kudus. Zero. And when you go back to the general success rate of the crossing uh, in football, crossing in football, the success rate of crossing is 2%. It is a very difficult skill to, to perfect. To execute. To execute. So if you are going to use that and say... On basis of that, Baba had a bad game. It is quite unfair. And we need to stop that thing. How can Baba Raman be trending number one before he has even kicked the ball? Yeah. Before he's kicked the ball, we already say he's bad. So why is it when he gives a bad pass, why isn't that, that bad pass going to shape the entire judgment of his game? Him. Why? Indeed. We are, and and we it are is also, it's also, and, it's and now Feng Tio 2 is catching fire. Because, but you see, you, you well, while well, what Danny says is true, <laughs> yeah. 
I think we also have to admit that a lot of this is because of residual anger. Residual. Yeah, I was I was coming to that to counterbalance the yes, point. Yes, because that he, he has had a lot of opportunities in the last decade. Yes, and a lot. Uh, Baba was huh? a guaranteed starter During in the, the Black Stars decade. when he was playing for when Chelsea's he reserves. Made a return to the Black Stars. We I have to admit that kind of thing upset people. Yeah, he was a guaranteed starter when he was playing Chelsea's reserves. Yeah. It upset people, yeah. and so for a long time, people felt like this guy isn't it. That's so when a, he actually that's starts, a very good point. when he actually starts playing well, the bus has moved. And the, and the justification at the time, if I remember correctly, from CK was that he got injured playing for the national team, so we need he has to, to play. We need to help him. Um, that's a fair point. Uh, this is game plan on 99.7 Joy FM, 103.9 Hits FM, brought to you by Petrosol. Um, Betway, what we would do right now is take a really, really short break. When I come back, your messages are welcome. 055 055-1111-997. Uh, I will read a lot of your messages when I come back and then we will switch the conversation onto something else extremely important. That's why I've reserved Muftao for in the second half. And when you come back, I'll talk to Black. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why are you the host of the show? <laughs> 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 055 I'll read messages when I come back. Also, the messages that I've come through on Twitter with the hashtag game plan, I will read them as well. So keep them coming here uh, on the show. We'll be right back. 9.7 Joy FM, the show is Game Plan, <laughs> live on 103.9 Hits FM, sponsored by uh, Tema Municipal Assembly, premises 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. <laughs> Stop this behavior. Was it you I was telling you that? There was one day I was telling you to mention it, say it like five times, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Charlie's on way. All right, guys, hey, let me read some you. messages before yeah, we switch to messages. our next topic. Um, Fent, Charlie. Uh, he says, uh, all right, here, uh, before you guys start the show, see you guys for come talk the truth, to. don't cover up anyone or anything about the Black Stars game. Then I'm sure you'll be disappointed <laughs> 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 because Baba Raman has had some defense. <laughs> uh, because Charlie, nothing Chris did nothing better to affect the game, it was the referee that robbed Central African Republic. Hey. This is hot tea bread. <laughs> that's why firing hot this afternoon <laughs> hot Steve Red that's no? why uh, more messages here the very hot stick the name is ta 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 aka bedroom one million and more <laughs> 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 my only question to you guys is so I have cast coach uh, 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 <laughs> you see it's one of these days <laughs> uh, Fent how can you play three matches with only six shots on target with all these attacking minded players there's something wrong with the system. Bright in East Ligon. Hmm. Good afternoon, guys. We have to tell Mr. Chris Hutton that the honeymoon is over because we can't be playing like this going into the AFCON or we will call for his exit soon before the AFCON. John from Achimota. Uh, where are the rest? Okay, good. Here. This message says, uh, this is from Sakatu in, Land, uh, in Luton. I've always admired the IU family. They've been loyal to the national team for more than a decade now. Four decades, they don't bro. Fake, they don't fake injuries. DR Congo 2015 in mind. During international break, personally, <laughs> I'll be happy. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> that was so seamless. <laughs> uh, let me take the message again. Uh, take you it guys again. interrupted me. <laughs> yeah, take it again. <laughs> I've always admired the IU family. They've been loyal to the national team for more than a decade now. They don't fake injuries during international break personally i'd be happy if uh he jordan is made the permanent assistant captain for the national team Pate is in serious he says when it comes to the national team they say he's injured pretty sure he will be in the arsenal match day squad next weekend well i'm not sure that's exactly fair to thomas he's hmm. injured uh, injury is injury uh, and he's injured oh, good message according yeah. to his club he didn't even play last weekend so let's be fair Stero in OUB Estate says look this Baba Raman resentment makes me ill is he that poor if we think so and we are not bereft of options are left back then the better options should be named or provided <laughs> this has been the situation in the past years and apathy towards him should cease Gideon Mensah isn't any better when he started Decay is just on point today and has reiterated my arguments I always make. Andre remains very important to this team and we must transition him carefully. He's our best option uh, or goal threat. The least we should take cues from how our previous captains have exited the team. We have a lot of work ahead. Stero, 
in OEB with that message. I have a feeling his name is Stero. Stero, eh? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a nickname. It's not ah, Stero, okay. man. Okay. Like yeah, in boys, but like Riddick. Stero is Stero also. Yeah. Redick has a four <laughs> from Takradi says, Baba Rama has been a flop for long. If we are judging Gideon on his two matches when Baba was away, then Baba's flop is more than literally and mathematically Gideon deserves to start. Queer. <laughs> and another thing we should know is Osman Bukhari and Semenyo are super subs. When opponents are tired, they can be brought in. But starting a match is too hard for them. I've been thinking that, you know I said that. Riddick. That I don't know, we should de decide what we want to do with you. Uh, you have said that. With Semenyo, yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, Kwesi Apia did decide that against USA. <laughs> 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 hey! <laughs> he was waiting for them to be tied <laughs> for him to bring Prince Bosnia in AC. He brought them Ankoyi. Uh -huh. So we have we have examples yes. of waiting for the opponent to be tied before. Look at that press conference eh, yes. in Brazil. You were there. I said there was a German journalist sitting next to me. Couldn't and he, believe it. And he was holding the translation yes. device. He put he removed the translation device and said, Did Quisi did Quisi up here say that? <laughs> <laughs> ah, interesting. Uh, this is a hmm. message uh, from uh, I think Joyce, Joyce Bedua. Okay. Hmm. And he says, um, all right, let me get her message. All right, good afternoon, guys. Uh, please can I have Oh, wait, where is it? Oh, she wants a contact number. Okay, no problem. Or uh, am I not at the bottom of her message? All right, cool. That's it. Yeah. We'll try and send it back to you. Uh, here are more messages. I think Baba Raman had a good game. This message uh, says from uh, Ajiman Joseph in Community Night. Tama Eki Ajingu, the man. He says, Hi, guys. For me, I'm still not impressed with the way our stars are playing under Coach Chris Hutting. How many games does he want to play before getting his tactics? Uh, right. I was expecting to see a better and more improved game as compared to that of Otuado. Bringing back Barbara Raman even tells us that he is moving as backwards. <laughs> what kind of tactics is he playing, Ajiman, with that question? Uh, this message says, um, good afternoon, game plan. Uh, it says, uh, if Ghana had not qualified... Okay. No, his message is down there. Yeah, okay, good, good. It says, if Ghana had... Hey, Keep sending me stuff. All right. My WhatsApp machine is messing no, no, with me. There, there, there. Yeah, if Ghana had not qualified, country man Sungu would have fired them in a professional way. <laughs> Tomorrow on fire for <laughs> He said, and he sends a picture of country man Sungu. Hello, yeah. friend. Greetings to you and Gary. Oh, he said, greetings to Gary. Please ask actually his impressions of Gideon Mensah when he came on. Also, why is Ransford your boy not getting any minutes or game time? That's Kelly Ozil in a crowd with that question. That's another curious case, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Please. Because uh, he, he's supposed to be like a, a, a goal threat. A goal threat. Another option, really. Yeah. Uh, Danny K from Lakeside sent a message. And he says, please, Danny K, our generation has seen the trophy before. Please, the 20 gave us uh, a very good cup <laughs> in their way. And he says, uh, he continues to say that the stars uh, give me the Man United vibes all over again. So I listen in the shape of Bruno complaining <laughs> and giving back passes the whole time. Elisha in the shape of Casimir being left alone to do whatever he was doing there. Jordan in the shape of Mount running all over the place mm. and not a single set piece made sense. I could go on and on and on. This message has no conclusion because there is no light at the end of the day. Bounce! I love that. I love that. That's interesting. Let me take a couple more. Great guy. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, all right, cool, cool. I'm, I'm scrolling too far now. All right. Um, okay. Yes. That's All right, no it. problem. Uh, this one says, uh, Leonard from Jamestown, he sent in this message. He says, I think Baba Rama had a good game. He wasn't bad on the day. And moreover, he's playing consistently at club level. Thank you, Leonard. And um, one more here, I believe. Yet yeah, Ghana has a brilliant left back called Latif Isa playing for Klax Vicar. Hi. Intro Tafelak. And Pharaoh Island. <laughs> I think we should have a look at him. He's very, very good. I, I think I know who this is. So this this person or people related or with knowledge on this Latif guy have been tagging me consistently in, yeah? in videos of this Latif guy. Latif is and up. there's another player in I think Burundi who people have been tagging me. It is a left back. No, he's not a left back. He's a striker. Gary, and then there's means, another. It, it means that you have a certain influence in the selection. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another. Yeah, player, yeah, what, what, what is the other explanation? And there's another. Gary, um, and there's another, another. And now he has been forced to remember all of them. So, so I see them, but 
the, somebody tagged me at this weekend at the end of league matches in Rwanda and said the person has scored I don't remember seven in five games or something like that. You know, so they tagged me back. Charlie. And you say Latif is a place for which club? Gary, I'll give you a hundred dollars. So so this one, to be fair, when I see it, I you I, skip. It's like Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> 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 this one is a Wi-Fi password. <laughs> the, the, the club is called Klaxvika. 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 Itotafelak. No, no, hey, no, this no, it sound, it no, no. Sound, it sounds like a malaria drug. No, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You. You we have to ask two. AI. We have to ask uh, AI how your he, name, uh, how uh, he got the, the spelling of that name. Whoever sent this message, he has it copied on his phone and he pastes it all the time. Oh, he yeah, doesn't yeah. write it himself. So this one, they will put it to you because... Put it to you. Uh, so, so AI, I put it to you that you copied it. <laughs> Klaxvika Itrofal Itrotafelak oh at Faroe Island. Faroe Islands. Uh, Raheem, are you two plays in Gibraltar? <laughs> Gibraltar, yeah. So, so a, is a Raheem, back. he too is a left back. Mm, There's yeah. an option there. Yeah. Yeah. All right back. But if we bring Raheem, are you people who say that the IU family think the Blasters is for them? Uh, he still even played. He's a, <laughs> the, his team is something imps. Oh. Are you know Raheem was still playing? Uh, no, he's still playing. Oh, no, he Gibraltar. plays for a he's team called something Imp. They won the Gibraltar League. Eh, that's it. But the team name has Imp in it. <laughs> Imp. <laughs> I am <laughs> Yes. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Anybody who watched Game of Thrones knows what an Imp is. <laughs> 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 you know. You uh, need uh, to check the average, average heights of the players. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yes. uh, let me take... I, I don't want to ignore the guys on Twitter. On Twitter, uh, yeah. Let me take a couple of messages but from But today's, today's comments have been... I mean... Uh, very civil very very wide selection yeah, 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 you know yeah. in thoughts it's, and it's good i like i get plan listeners yeah, yeah. L- listen so this, people this are making listeners. good contributions this is what we like we're trying to see how we can because the guys listen okay <laughs> i met <laughs> 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 they're always and you see they're always <laughs> <listening>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <they're> watching <laughs> daniel has an experience from when he went to nigeria the boys all watch the shows. They listen to the I shows all the time. I'm telling you. I met, I met, I met, uh, uh, I met Fatal Isaku at the airport when I was my brother. Le, uh, please let's thank God for, on my behalf. Why? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like by now today we will be, we'll be having a this thing edition. What a shock! Like, what a shock edition! <laughs> my brother, we're going to Kumase. One Kumase that is supposed to be 30, 40 minutes maximum. He spent around three hours. You go, and I was on the flight with Fatal Isaku. Hey, we get to Kumasi. That uh, that pilot is trying to land. He's trying to land. He's going down. Oh, the wheels are out. He's going down. Then he realizes that Charlie Onghushi got back out. Then we roam around. If you just say like that, ah, in the sky, like 20 minutes, he came back, tried to land. Wheels out. He's going down. He's going down. Onghushi. Because he might as well be landing on somebody's roof. You can't see that. <laughs> you can't see the runway because it's cloudy. Then he goes back out. And then he says he's taking us back to Kumasi. Accra, hey, Accra. Back to Accra. We came to Accra. We sat there for one hour. Then we went back before we were able to land. But my point being, while I was going, I met his uncle on the, uh, at the airport. You know, he late replacement for Joseph Pence. So yeah. he was on the same flight as me. Um, you know. So when I saw him, he started smiling at me even before i i approached him so i walked straight to him and then i uh, i said oh are you on this flight going to kumasi you're going to join the team he said yeah, yeah, yeah and i said oh uh nice to meet you my name is Fe- I, I watch you all the time <laughs> 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 you know and it's the same because i remember daniel went to nigeria yeah. uh for the return leg of the World Cup qualifier. Oh, that was the first time you met Kudus. Yeah. So I was taking a video of the player's arrival. I didn't even see him. So yes. My camera was on the uh, Jiku. And then he came from the side and he said, Oh, I watch your analysis. Oh, you do well, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, then we took a selfie. I said, okay, you should come. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so that is, could you, hey, Danny Granty and a fan. Yes. yes. Right. He, he approached me. <laughs> but you know I'm a big man. Of course. <laughs> I, 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 come here. So, and that's why sometimes it's also, when we speak about the players, it's really, like, it's a very touchy area. It's a very touchy subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah. Because when we, when we criticize them small or they will come and unfollow ah, us. They'll come and follow you on Twitter. <laughs> oh me, I've had experience plenty. <laughs> I've had experience plenty. How oh, the boys have followed me. One of the boys one of the guys told me this morning. Uh-huh. I, I met them this morning and uh, he said um he said one of the more experienced players. 
he said my my assessment of the black stars has changed in the last 10 years and i said oh how so he you said less volatile no he said he <laughs> says the words i use uh, I'm, I'm just giving an improvement. More considerate. I, I'm, more, I'm more considerate and less caustic. That's right. Yeah. No, he's absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause it's, you know, ten uh, years ago, it, it comes with the growth. A growth and the maturity. Yes. Yeah. No, and maturity. understanding. No, understanding the, the back human, issues. The hu- yes. human aspect of it. Of, yeah. of it. You know, yes. you can criticize, but when you say Charlie, some things, some way, like and a good example is what Daniel said. When Baba Arman starts getting abused even before the game started, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what I don't understand. No, no, this one I'll talk. You, you are sitting there, no. You, you are physician assistant. What's up? You at your job, no, you son. But when you lose line up, no, then you can't even talk. Then you are insulting. Ah, like no, that's not the human. No, that's one thing. I the day, say. the day, you know, do you know the day I gave up on? Like I just knew that some people are just unnecessarily targeted. I think was it? No, you said this before. You said, said this before. <laughs> I've said this, but now I repeat. If that is Baba before. Rama was in. Was it? I think, I think there was a second game, right? Yeah, there's a second game. Was he? He, he wasn't in. He wasn't in the team. <laughs> and then Ghana was. You know, after we, you know, we scored, and then the last twenty minutes or so, we were under some crazy yeah. pressure. <laughs> Somebody wasn't watching the. He's going to tweet. Hey, Baba Rama, they shout. Criticism <laughs> on <laughs> autopilot. What I? What I? He wasn't in the match. No. He said, "When you know, I blast that place, Baba Rama." Thank you. When I spoke to Stephen up here, he said one thing. He said that many of the people who criticize Black Stars players don't even know what? the JC they are wearing for the match that day. Oh, oh they yeah. don't. Especially in this era of social media. Yeah. They have no yeah. idea. Quite a few of them. They'll just, hear, they'll just hear that the Black Stars is losing and they'll they just start the fire. Start. <laughs> they'll just start. All right. Listen, guys. Georgia Freer has been disqualified from the GFA presidential race. He has three days to appeal. The um, the uh, let me just throw this off to Muftal. There was quite a lot that was said in that elections committee uh, statement to uh, to George, which was also published. Uh, it's public knowledge. The crux of the matter, according to them, is that he made some declarations under false pretense. In other words, some people who signed his form were not qualified to sign his form. Then there was a regulation from the GFA statutes that said that if any anomaly was discovered in any of the aspirants' form, they had within two days a right to the aspirant to then fix those anomalies. We are now trying to understand what the whole process was and how the conclusion came to be that he's now been disqualified. Muftar, you've been following this very closely. What do you know about what went into the assessment of his forms and what are the issues in these forms that he couldn't rectify in those two days that the committee was supposed to write to him? Whether they even wrote to him? They didn't write to him. So much so that he's not been disqualified. Let's let's go through the issues. They didn't write to him. For for that one, that, that I can say with all certainty, that uh, the elections committee never wrote to him to tell him that there were issues with his nomination form. Um, but like you mentioned... Um, when he went to the vetting and um, appeared before the committee, and uh, there were also some petitions that were filed against him. One of them was about a text message he sent to Kwesi Techi many years ago, and uh, it was one of the crimes that was used against him as well. But I think the, the crux of everything is that Warriors, uh, um, Victory Warriors FC, a club that belongs to Leslie Kuku Battles, and uh, he's a sole owner, shareholder of the club. And then uh, his wife is a secretary of the, of the club. Um, Jeffrey Asari uh, signed on behalf of the club and uh, indicated that he was a director of the club. And um, the elections committee uh, realized that, uh, I know, the GFA, they've got, they've got the, the directors of every single club. Uh, before them. So they realized that Jeffrey Asari is not the director of uh, uh, the club. They checked at the register of companies. They realized that it is just Kuku Battles and, and, and a wife uh, whose names are there. So they reached out to Kuku Battles to ask him whether Jeffrey Asari is a director of his club and whether he was a signatory to the, uh, um, uh, to the club. Okay. And uh, he told them no, Jeffrey Asari is not a signatory 
They asked Jeffrey Asari as well. He also said he's not a signatory of the club. If you read the statutes of the FA, uh, especially Article 13J2, which was pointed out by the GFA, mm -hmm. it says that um, uh, you should be authorized signatory of the company. The clubs, as we speak, are companies. Are registered They are companies. registered companies. At the Registrar General. At the Registrar General. So if you're not an authorized signatory of the company, um, you are not, you cannot endorse <coughs> the form of a candidate who wants to become a, a GFA president. Okay. So um, they realized that uh, Jeffrey Asari indicating that he was a director of the club was falsehood. And that was also one of the things that was used against him. But one thing that I've, I was able to pick behind the scenes was the fact that Yes, uh, Kuku Batals was very much aware that his club was going to endorse uh, George Afroye and it was used to endorse him. But I think the required thing that they should have done was to maybe also communicate to the FA that I am not in town, but I want my club to endorse uh, George Afroye as the, uh, a presidential candidate for the GFA elections. Uh, what I, I picked up was the fact that, yes, there was a letter to that effect. That said that um, they were backing Georgia Free to contest the GFA elections. Um, many people, uh, some people had said that they were they they got eight endorsements for the GFA presidential position, but unfortunately, um, some of them reached out to the FA and said they never endorsed Georgia Free. One of them, wow, is, wow. One of them is the Chiman City. The Chiman City uh, said that they never endorsed Georgia Free to go for the GFA. Who, is the who signed for him and who is saying they didn't? Well, um, one uh, is it Akwesi Menu? Uh, Ame Yau Menu. Ame Yau Menu. Yeah, he 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 <coughs> is, um, said that they, they didn't endorse George Fuye to contest for the position of president of the Ghana Football Association. George Fuye feels that um, he's done nothing wrong because I spoke to him just a few days ago, and um, some of these things. In fact, I asked him on record whether um, he heard the rumors that they were going to disqualify him, and in fact, uh, these rumors actually even started before he appeared before the vetting committee. They started like three weeks ago. Yeah, that he was going to be disqualified. I asked him if he heard. He was like, yeah, he's heard it. But <coughs> if there was anything like that uh, in relation to his endorsement form, uh, they would have reached out to him. And But he never got anything like that from the GFA elections committee telling him that they found some anomalies in uh, nomination, f uh, nomination forms. So at that point, he felt that he's gone through because if there was anything... Within two days, the elections were committee to write to should him. have written to him and tell him that they, we found A, B, C. Do you want to change? And the other interesting thing is that I had a I had conversation with some lawyers, and they were like, you cannot actually use his subscribers to disqualify him. Because what usually happens is that you would have to call him and tell him that we found A, B, C. Do you want to make changes to it or not? If and then if he's unable if to... If he's unable to make the changes, then the, you can now use it against him. In fact, in 2019, when Amanda Clinton was struggling to get the required number of endorsements, the conversation committee gave her a window to go and make sure she was and able to get people, everything, yeah. which, was, which was granted to her. So they say that the elections committee should have given Georgia Free that room to do it. They didn't give it to him. And, and that's fact, not just discretionary. It's mandated. It's, it's mandatory. Yes. Because it but it's open it, to interpretation. Is you it? see, so I'll read to you. You read it. You yes. read it. It's, it's <coughs> Article 8. We're talking about submission and examination. Uh, he's holding it. Read it. No, not the regulation. So I also spoke to a sports lawyer and I sought his understanding of that regulation. Provision. Mm. He says, if you interpret that to mean, quote, that you haven't provided all the documents, as in that you've left some out, then the elections committee will be right because it would mean that the provision speaks to omission or failure to provide documents as opposed to the documents not meeting the requirements. There is not providing it. And then there is providing a document that does not meet the requirements. Okay. Mm. If you do not provide it, there is a recall. So, Mr. Freye, you didn't bring this. Can you bring it? Okay. So that will be consistent with why the normalization committee asked... Amanda. Amanda, Amanda to go and bring it. That is different from providing something that does not meet the requirements. So in other words, providing false information. Exactly. And so it goes on to say, um, as opposed to the documents not meeting the requirements of the process or it being forged or falsified or incomplete. And here's the thing. 
my understanding of this, beyond what we are being told, there is a difference between the documents, so personal identification matters. There is a difference between that category and then a statutory declaration. Mm. And that is a matter of breaking the law. Mm. That is a matter of false pretense. Yeah. You cannot simply wish it away. Yes. Because it's like you are submitting documents. You are pretending to be someone at, you are not. No, you are submitting like, documents are submitting like at an document embassy. Kind of, yeah. At an embassy. They ask you, you know, they ask you, yeah. are you sure? Go through the documents again. If you submit and you make any mistakes, you cannot change again. Yes. Yeah. And then they ask you to sign an undertaking yes. that yeah. but I even so and so and so and so. Yeah. Exactly. But even more to the point, this is a matter of someone by conduct breaking the law. Mm. Anybody could wake up tomorrow and say that they are taking Jeffrey Asari to the court mm -hmm. yeah. for impersonating the club. Yeah. In fact, if there were to be bad blood between Leslie and then Jeffrey Asari, he, can take him he could have too. taken him to the court. Now, this is the second part that he sent. He says, if you interpret it to mean that it is a window to allow for correction or errors in the documents provided, mm -hmm. then the election committee will be wrong in disqualifying him when he was not offered an opportunity to make the corrections. And he says, I don't think that's the intention of the freemess. Mm -hmm. So by the freemess, I suppose he's talking about the, the spirit who, of yeah. that yeah, regulation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Those, 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 those who did that. Right. But, so but there has to be a distinction between Merely the document that supports his identity or that speaks to his personality, the experience over the years, and says, This is George Free. And then something such as statutory declaration. For those ones, <laughs> it's, it's not something that that's, that's is, a, but is a subject was, of opinion. In fact, I was hoping to get uh, Kofi Mayne to help us understand because he's the chief. There is nobody who knows the GFA statues more than But I have I have a friend that a friend lawyer who also said that in company law, if someone has held themselves to be an official of an entity, and they've conducted business in that capacity in the past, then they would be qualified to continue to be referred to as an official of that company and. The, the, the signatory to documents would be valid. So what no, I no, think no, no. should have happened... There's difference here. The statute of the FA says you must be registered at the registrar of General. companies yeah. as a signatory yes. of the company. company. I saw a letter. So was it, or is it just me? No, but which so, was purporting so, so to the be letter a letter coming true. from the club. The letter is true. Indicating the change of it signatures. It was true. Yes. However, it was after the facts. Uh -huh. George Freer's vetting was on the 21st. Yes. The letter was sent on the 22nd. 22nd. The following that day. was after they probably noticed yes. that, uh, yes. that Jeffrey was in. Yes. More to the point, the letter was sent after Leslie himself had realized the mistake in admitting to the committee that Jeffrey is not a signatory. Oh. Right? Yes. So beyond George himself, perhaps from his learnings of the vetting, potentially prompting Leslie that, you know what, can you ratify this error. Jeffrey's position? and make him a director ah, to do this. Got it. Leslie himself may have, because unless, of course, the committee lied. But they say there was a video interview where Leslie admitted that Jeffrey is not a signature. Which was recorded. So this looks like a move after the facts. After Leslie had admitted, after Jeffrey had corroborated what they had found from the registrar, yeah. from the Match Connect system, from George Jeffrey himself, and from Leslie. So in other words, from what I understand from everything you're saying it wasn't actually a case of false pretense it was a case of not doing the right the right thing there was before th there is a false so, pretense no hold on hold on in other words leslie actually yeah would have wanted if he knew that this would come up he would have done that before no yeah, you would so have, it means yeah. that what I'm trying to say is it means that Jeffrey didn't go behind his back. No, 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 no. no, 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 no that's what I'm saying. So, 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 no, so he didn't. And, and you see, at the so, risk so, of so, so this is actually at the risk of sounding unreasonable. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I was coming to that. Yes, and, look, and, and, and I'll and I'll use an analogy. Here. Something. Yes. If we wake up tomorrow, <laughs> and the EC said, Mr. Mahama cannot contest for the elections because the NDC did not meet certain requirements. What would you think this country will turn into? Yeah. I'm not saying they should set the law aside for Judy no, Free. No, 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 but it's, it's a valid point. I'm not saying it. they should set yeah, the law yeah. aside for him. I'm just saying that after everything that has happened, maybe, just maybe, it would have been in the interest of the GFH to say, you know what, 
let's overlook this and let it. That, that is what I was going to say. Because that from what we have been told, as far uh, as recent as the first week of August, and perhaps all Muftawu and all of us dismissed that information because of where it came from. George Free was struggling to get people to endorse, endorse him. Endorse him. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because that is the part of it that is perhaps the conspiracy theories. But what we can say for a fact, supposedly because of vilification. But what we can say for a fact was that Kets played mafia tactics. Sure. He started his campaign early, got a lot of the clubs to endorse him. The no, endorsement started in April. Yes, and for fear, <laughs> for fear of victimization, majority of these clubs endorsed him. So by the time they opened the campaign, and that is where I feel George cannot play victim. You saw the man actively campaigning. You didn't say anything. You didn't do beyond not saying anything. No, you no. saw the man. There was nothing George could have done about it. No, but no, he no, could. No, 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 I'm not saying about the man in power. No, as the man in power, you uh, have uh, a Mokta, certain Mokta, Mokta, advantage. Mokta, 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 most of George is also going we, out to get endorsement. Incumbency. Get Mokta. endorsement with what? No, Muftao. Can I just make this one? There was a form. If 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 the rumors or the claims we heard are anything to go by during the FA Cup semi-final. Clubs were directed to one room. You go and sign and you leave. The forms were not available. How was George ever going to go out there and yeah, seek but, endorsement? But see, it was so, never so going to happen. See, that's an allegation. No, yeah, no, but that's see, what I'm saying. The caliber allegation. of people in that room that day makes it hard for me to accept or believe that allegation. No, ah, not even right. that. That's fair. Gary. See, the, to sum up in one minute. Yes. One, quickly. Muftao, GFA elections are not bigger than national elections. And even at national elections... Ever since I started following these things, from 1992 when I, I didn't know what was going on, when I could start watching TV, opposition candidates will always, as a matter of course, accuse the incumbent of abusing the incumbency. Oh, yeah. You understand? Yeah. So at least say something and let's know that you are saying something. No, but the point is the point is that some of the clubs that went and signed came out and complained. No, no, you no. You asked us to go and sign document. Right. We go sign document. Uh, yeah, no, I have the last a, thing I was saying. I, I have a message here. Yeah. Um, 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 Fent. I would say that if I'm Mr. Keto Kraku, eh, because I have done all these so-called mafia tactics, whether it's true or not, the fact is that Mr. Okraku, as we know here, seems to have a certain advantage, whether by fair or foul means, in terms of the numbers. It seems, if I am he, I would impress upon the election committee to let this go. So that I beat the man. Exactly. I beat the man necessary and superior. Uh, so okay. there is no doubt. Uh, 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 good afternoon, friend. There are many okay. clubs that Mufthal. did not endorse Kate. That did not endorse. But they are not endorse George. So you saying that? So you can't dismiss George. George's uh, you can't candidacy. You can't him. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, friend. I love your show to the core, especially the man Gary. Your presentations are always spot on. It's not like we want the Black Stars to play like Real Madrid in the Champions League or Man City in the Premier League, but at least the play should match similar teams on the continent. To be honest, there's no cohesion in the game yesterday. Too many misplaced passes. A win uh, was just yes. per chance or by individual brilliance, which is very appalling. But we hope for better days. Tell Gary, please, I need this number. Dell from Madrid. And uh, says, yeah, oh, oh, from Madrid, eh? Yeah, yeah, Mika, I want to see the new banner. Ah. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have time for a couple of calls. Zero, no, 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 Dell, hit me on Twitter, please. Uh, Take zero me, three, and show me the new banner. Uh, you can send it to him privately on this WhatsApp chat. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> zero three zero <laughs> two two one six five four one. We can do, I think, two or three calls. Zero three zero two. 216-541-0302-216-541. I promise and I had to deliver. 0302-216-541. Uh, it's the number. 0302-216-541. Your thoughts on all the things we've been talking about on the show are very much uh, welcome. Uh, also, uh, some messages on Twitter. Uh, with the injunction, will the disqualification of George be valid? Won't it be contempt? Uh, Ransford B. Akoto. That's another issue we haven't even discussed. Yeah, yeah. The because the FA actually said they were putting their timelines potential uh, on hold and uh, all yeah. of a sudden you're communicating to people who have qualified and those who have not qualified. Courage Kelvin on Twitter says, Sincerely, I watched the game yesterday and I realized we had individual players on the pitch and please, I wouldn't blame Inaki Williams' performance because Jordan and Kudus were hanging onto the ball too much while Inaki was running into space. That's from George. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Guess who is listening to Game Plan? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, Nana Kwesi is on the line. Nana Kwesi. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. Good, good. Go ahead. Make, be brief for five, us. Five. Six, five. Yeah. Yeah, Nana Kwesi, go ahead. 
All right, sure. So, yeah, I wanted to say something about what Daniel said regarding Senegal and how they give to say time. You see, the difference between we and them is that they were doing something, proper measures were being taken. That is how come me, if you say we should give anybody time in this country, I won't subscribe to the idea. What are we doing? They are not doing anything. They are not doing anything. They are just talking about this time. To what? <laughs> to what system exactly? Right. What are we doing? Every country in the world is developing their sport. Except Ghana. All right. Thank you. Uh, Nana Kwesi, we have to go to Kingsley. Uh, Kingsley, where are you joining us from? Hey, my name is Kingsley, calling from Twitch. Go ahead, Kingsley. Yeah, please, I just want to ask you something. I'm listening. Yesterday, yesterday the time we were watching the match, what happened to the, the pitch invader? Because I saw some guy pitch invader coming to Kudus. So what, what has happened to the person? Yeah, so I, I think the, the guy was taking to the police station like they always do. Uh, I haven't followed up on it, to be honest. Uh, we will do and let you know. But what I know for sure is that the GFA will be fined another couple of dollars. They always get fined. And it's a very important point because it's becoming an issue. And the GFA, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Okreku is listening. How much have you guys spent on pitch invaders so far since you came? Because against... Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it keeps happening. It keeps happening. Anyway, thank you. Let's go to Mark. Uh, how did the person even scale that big barricade at the Babaya Stadium? I don't get it. Mark, where are you joining us from? Um, good afternoon. I'm calling you from Adabraka. All right, Mark, go ahead. Yes. Um, hmm. Best thing about this disqualification, and I would have wished that the, the elections committee averted their minds to the uh, case between Electoral Commission and Kweti Doom and Co. And what the court said about these processes. Nomination, the vetting process itself, until the day of election, is part of the nomination period. So that when you detected abnormalities, as natural justice will demand, you get back to the person. It is when the person is unable to correct those things, then you can hold it against the person. That's fair. Thank you very much, Mark, with, uh, with that information. My name is Fento Tahiru Fento. Gary L. Smith, uh, Muftar Nabila Abdullahi, Daniel Kranting, and uh, Achita Maklu join me here on Game Plan. The show is available as a podcast. Later, you can listen back and share. Until next time, thanks so much for your time.